Welcome, everyone, to the capital of Wisconsin-Madison on a simply gorgeous early afternoon on this September Saturday. The Wisconsin Badger faithful getting set here outside Camp Randall. So much fun here in Madtown. It is all business, though, for the Badgers as they take the field. And yes, the road to the Rose Bowl does start here for the Badgers. They're ranked 23rd in the nation, and for the first time, they will take on the Troy Trojans. Hi, everyone. Matt Dev alongside Jay Lehman. Certainly glad to have you along. And talking to the head coach of the Wisconsin Badgers, Paul Chris. Entering this game, they're still searching for who they are. And a lot of that is because... A couple weeks ago, you take on Alabama. Last week, you take on Miami of Ohio. Two certainly different opponents. Yeah, who are the Wisconsin Badgers? They struggled mightily against Bama. Well, Bama's a good team. They blow Miami of Ohio out of the water. But Troy's right in between. A great measuring stick for exactly where the Wisconsin Badgers are today. All right, they will not have their starting running back in Corey Clement. That means a lot of Daria Goombawale, and that's one of the keys to the game, trying to get that run game going, Jay. It always starts up front for the Wisconsin Badgers, establishing the run, being physical at the point of attack, at the line of scrimmage. When that happens, it opens up everything else for the Badger offense. That play action with Joel Stavi, when the run game's going, is on point. For the Troy Trojans, they are a quick strike offense led by their quarterback in Brandon Silvers. They can strike quickly, big plays galore, and they're going to need some big plays out of the passing game and the run game. They're also going to need to catch some breaks and some, create some turnovers on defense. All right, it's the Troy Trojans and the Wisconsin Badgers for the first time from Camp Randall Stadium, moving closer to kickoff here on this Saturday from Madison. Back here in Madison, BTN football. The one-on-one -one Troy Trojans getting set to take on the Wisconsin Badgers, ranked 23rd with a record of 1-1. One and one. Both teams coming off of wins. Troy last week defeated Charleston Southern 44-16. The Wisconsin Badgers destroyed Miami, Ohio last week 58 to nothing all right time now for the auto owners insurance impact players and jay we begin with the badgers daria gumbawale a slight running back by wisconsin standards but can catch the ball in the backfield and can take it to the house 100 yards last week alex erickson been the go-to receiver for years here at wisconsin solid route runner and can stretch the field vertically tyler roberts the best defensive player that troy has plays on the line of scrimmage brandon silvers a quick release accurate quarterback they can distribute the ball all over the field brandon burks can make him miss in space take it to the house and vince beagle one of the best all-around linebackers in the country can rush the passer stop the pass and stop the run all right it is time for the 2015 university of wisconsin marching band We return kickoff between Troy and Wisconsin. As the Badgers take the field here, let's send it down to the third member of our broadcast crew, Jay Wilson. Jay? Well, you said all week that Troy will give you a test today. What do they have that gives you concern? I think they got uh, good coaching staff. I think they got really good players, and uh, it'll be a test for us today, I believe. No Corey Clement again today, but how do you go about reestablishing the run with or without Corey Clement? Well, it takes all 11 to run the football, and that's what's going to take tonight if you want to be good running the football. It's got to take all 11. Great day, isn't it? It this is. This is what it's all about? It's always a good day. I appreciate well, it. Thanks very much. Matt, back to you upstairs. All right, thank you very much, Jay. And Madison native Paul Crest in his first season at the helm of 
the Wisconsin Badgers. It is simply a gorgeous day here from Camp Randall Stadium. 68 degrees here in Madison, Wisconsin. Wisconsin has won the coin toss. And they have elected to defer. And so getting set here on this Saturday from Camp Randall. Bratcher Underwood, the redshirt freshman from Dothan, Alabama, getting set to kick off for the Trojans. Back is Natrell Jamerson. And Jamerson takes it from his own end zone up to the 20. To the 25, cuts back toward the middle of the field, and he has stopped at the 26-yard line, and that is where the Badgers will come out and work. And so here is Stavi. You look at the numbers, it's been highly productive this season thus far. He's really carried the offense, not the run game. It's been Joel Stavi coming out in his senior year off to a great start. I had mentioned that they had won and deferred. They did not. I apologize for that as Stavi gets under center. And in motion, Stavi. And a handoff now, Agumba Wale. And Agumba Wale on the run. And Jalen Harris comes up. And a pickup of five. Right from the jump, they come out with the old Wisconsin power. Their favorite play, pull the guard around, have Derek Watt, the fullback lead, give it to Agumba Wale. Six yards in the carry. They'll take that all day if you're a Badger. Second and five now. And this was one of the things in talking to the head coach, Paul Chris, they wanted to come out. They wanted to establish the run early. And it's interesting when you take a look at the stats. Agumba Wale off the right side, and he's going to be able to get close to the first down, but come up maybe a yard or two short as Demetrius Kane is there on the stop. You look at the numbers, and you know, you're so used to looking at the Badgers and the Badgers having those run totals up high, but it's the reverse through the first two games. And, of course, some of that has to do with being down against Alabama. You're putting it in the air trying to get back in that game. They were down against Alabama. Corey Clement was injured early in that football game. And they've had some trouble, especially on the right side of the offensive line, get any continuity as far as guys being healthy and playing strong. Taiwan Deal, the running back. And he powers ahead for the first down as Jalen Harris is able to come in and make the tackle. This is textbook Wisconsin. Just an old-fashioned power play for the third play in a row. Guard pulls around. Derek Watt leads the way. They pick up the linebacker and the nose tackle. Four yards on the carry. From the 43rd yard line, Tanner McAvoy. On the field, the receiver, and a handoff once again. Agumba Wale, the ball carrier. Agumba Wale picking up four yards on the play. On that play, that was a zone blocking scheme. There was no pulling guards. And what we saw there is that the Troy defense got a little bit of penetration. Penetration kills a zone scheme. That's really not the wheelhouse of Wisconsin, but we think, as you can see, Paul Chris trying to send a message to his team, we are going to be a run-first football team. Second down, they have yet to throw in the football. Three wide receivers set, inside handoff. Agumba Wale is brought down, stacked up by the line of scrimmage, and it's going to bring up now third down. Just a power play, one back out of the shotgun, and you see the defensive line got inside of tight end Austin Trailer. Wasn't able to hold the point of attack, made the tackle for no gain. Jamal Statham on the stop, the sophomore from Melbourne, Florida. Third down and five. Can the Badgers keep this opening drive alive here from their own 48 yard line? Stavi. Bad snap, scoops it up under pressure and brought down by Tyler Roberts and Rashad Dillard. And the poor snap from Dan Boltz, the junior from Barrington, Illinois. Yeah, really bad snap. It looked like Stavi wasn't exactly ready for it as well. Dan Boltz, one of the guys that offensive corner Joe Rudolph said was setting a tempo for that offensive line. Big mistake there is now it's a big loss on third down. Wisconsin's going to have to punt on their opening drive. Drew Meyer, the senior from Heartland, Wisconsin. 
Teddy Rubin is back all five seven and 160 pounds a senior from Scottsdale Arizona had a punt return for a touchdown last week and he is knocked down at the 15 yard line they're going to place the ball at the 17 yard line as Darius Hillary comes in and he makes the big play on special teams well Darius Hillary got in front of the def of the offensive blocker put him on his back so he couldn't be blocked and made the play that's your starting cornerback playing gunner on your punt team now he's going to play corner and that's what they do at Wisconsin punt is one of the most important plays them as it is for any team and they have a lot of starters playing on special teams Brandon Silvers the sophomore from Orange Beach Alabama Silvers quick strike and the pass up to the 21 yard line of the pass real data by Teddy Rubin We're gonna see Michael Caputo on the stop they, look at this team forget about time of possession in this game if you're the Troy Trojans because they are a quick strike offense right more than time of possession it's the amount of plays they yeah. can get looking for 75 to 80 plays is what head coach Neil Brown said you're gonna see a lot of quick routes they're gonna use Brandon Burke out of the backfield there it is right there Brandon Burks out of the backfield and he is stopped by Vince Beagle and TJ Edwards and Vince Beagle the junior from Wisconsin Rapids Vince Beagle can do a lot look he's actually rushing the passer but reads the play comes off gets an ankle and contains the play for a two-yard game Vince Beagle's good because he can do a lot he can rush the passer he can defend the pass he can stop the run he's nasty with his hands and Dave Aran at even scored said he's got some natural pop to it Third and eight now for Troy. Third and long, stepping up. Silvers, and he overthrows his intended target of John Johnson. And so they will be forced to punt, the Troy Trojans. And if you're Troy, you have a high-tempo offense. This is the risk that you run. A three and out. You put your defense right back on the field to get pounded by the Wisconsin running game, and you just can't afford many three and outs if you're Troy in this game. Ryan Kay is the punter. And Alex Erickson fumbles it, and then the Badgers are able to fall on it at the 19-yard line and a miscue there as Reggie Love is able to fall on the football. Calling for a fair catch, goes back right through his hands and Reggie Love on the scene. There is Corey Clement, the junior running back from New Jersey, out for the second consecutive week with a groin injury. Injured against Alabama. Rushed the ball eight times, 16 yards, two receptions for 19 yards. And in talking to the coaches, they said, look, he's just not there yet. He's real close. Stavi to the air, looking for a big play and able to come through as Robert Wheelwright is on the reception. And inside Troy territory or close, they're going to mark it actually at the 49 of the Badgers. This is that back shoulder fade. The quarterback receiver going to read. He throws behind the cornerback. Very hard for a cornerback to adjust because he's trying to predict deep. Good communication between Wheelwright and Stavi for a big completion. They hope that Clement returns next week against Hawaii. There is some conversation. Maybe we'll see him against Iowa October 3rd, running straight through the middle. And nearly to the first down marker. And on the ground, Agumbawale. And he is met by Kitchens. Kitchens comes up to make the stop, and somebody's going to have to help him with his jersey and the shoulder pad. Agumbawale right there with great vision. Front side of the play was all sealed up by the Troy defense. Took one cut, broke it up for a seven-yard gain. Last week, Agumbawale, his first career 100-yard-plus game on the ground he had 112 handoff once again trying to bounce outside now turns it back up inside it's Taiwan deal still moving his feet and finally stacked up and brought down by Kane and Kitchens along with a Marshall there 
Well, you've got to seal the edge if you're Troy. Watch Taiwan Deal just bounce the power outside, then takes one cut up. Show some great power right there. That's what we're used to seeing from Wisconsin running backs. Power, multiple tacklers to bring him down. That's the physicality that offensive line coach Joe Rudolph wants to see. Deal, a pickup of 13. Handoff once again, Deal cuts it back up inside, lowers the shoulder and close to a first down. William Lloyd is there on the stop, the junior from Rosedale, Mississippi. Take what the defense gives you. Instead of bouncing outside, it's sealed. He cuts it right back up into that A gap, which was vacated by the linebacker scraping over to make sure they didn't bounce outside. Good adjustment by Taiwan Deal. That's a veteran running back move right there, using vision to pick the right hole. Second series for Stavi and the Badgers looking sharper for sure and another handoff deal once again scoots right through the middle and a first down as Mitchell Rowland comes in and he makes the tackle this is a Troy team that began the year at North Carolina State Dave Dorn of course former DC here defensive coordinator with the Wisconsin Badgers now the head coach there Played well against North Carolina State, and then a big blowout win against an FCS opponent in Charleston Southern. They also have one more game that Neil Brown, the first-year head coach, said. He goes, you look at it, there's three opponents, North Carolina State, Wisconsin, and Mississippi State. Breaking outside, headed to the end zone, a Goomba Wale, and a touchdown for the Badgers. 12 yards on the ground. And the Badgers doing exactly what they wanted to do entering this game. Establish a line of scrimmage and get that run game going. We've seen about seven or eight power plays already. And what was great about Agumba Wale used his vision again to cut it back up, cut back against the grain of the defense, made a couple guys miss in the defensive backfield, and was out the gate for six points. Rafael. Gaglianoni, the extra point is good, and the 23rd ranked Badgers are on the board. 7 0. Six plays, 81 yards, capped off by a 12 yard run by Dare Agumbawale. 73 combined yards from Agumbawale and Taiwan Deal, and Jay, let's go back to the touchdown run. Starts up front, Michael Dieter, the guard, going to pull around, Derek Watt going to lead, and you're going to see he, uh, Agumba Wale is going to read and then cut back against the grain for the TD. So Michael Dieter, somewhere behind, he's going to pull around, Derek Watt, they seal, and then nobody's on the backside, makes the guy miss in the defensive backfield, six points. Classic Wisconsin football, that's how you run the power. <laughs> Agumba Wale with the touchdown. That is his second touchdown of the season. Andrew Endicott to kick it off. Rubin and Johnson are back. Teddy Rubin and John Johnson. 7-0 the third-ranked Badgers. Rubin settles underneath it from the six. Brings it up to the 20, wrapped up and tackled. And brought down right at the 20-yard line. Mark Sari there in a return of 14. Neil Brown, second youngest FBS head coach in the land, just 35 years of age. He's a former offensive coordinator for the Kentucky Wildcats, spent time as well with Texas Tech. He was at Troy back in 2006 through 2009, and he returns as the head coach. They're really an innovator on offense. Uses tempo to his advantage. When you use tempo, you can compete with teams with better talent because you go faster and you know what you're doing. He also was great in the short, quick passing game. Incomplete pass. And a flag is down. The pass intended for John Johnson. Darius Hillary made a great special teams tackle for the Badgers and was right there. Pass interference, defense, number five. Ball be placed at the spot of the ball. Servinsky, Automatic first down. Our referee. Neil Brown in the Sun Belt Conference, and you think about uh, the coaches, Mark Hudspeth and Louisiana Lafayette, and 
Willie Fritz at Georgia Southern. It is a coaches league for sure in the Sun Belt. And there's some really strong programs there. And he is trying to rebuild Troy. No question. And they've had a tremendous amount of success. First is FCS and now in the FBS. And John Johnson on the reception. And he's brought down by Vince Beagle to pick up a five. And Jay, in talking to Neil Brown, one of the things he, he said, you know, you watch it. He goes, I've been in the SEC for the last couple of years, and there's a guy 47, Vince Beagle, okay? He stands out when I'm watching him on film. Yes, he's like a bulldog on the field. <laughs> Plays physical with his hands. Sometimes they line him up like right now in a five technique. Head up on a tackle. He's got 50 pounds on him, but he's a dog. Hand off to Burke straight ahead. And quickly, let's go, Chen. All right, 7 nothing here. It is third and short now for the Trojans. And Troy does this on third and short. They come out in an unbalanced line to cut. And look at... Wisconsin looks a little bit confused defensively, but they've waited. A wildcat here with Burks running the ball, and he's met at the line of scrimmage, but a surge forward. And is Burks able to get that first down? It appears as though that he does have the first down. A little wildcat here with Silvers in motion. Yeah, a little wildcat. There's only two offensive linemen on the left. They motion him out, and Burks is hitting the backfield. As hectic as Wisconsin looked prior to the snap, they hit him in the backfield. But the leg drive of, drive of Brandon Burks got him the first down. Now a fresh set of downs. First down from the 39. Burks in motion. Five wide receivers set. Silvers under pressure across the middle. And a big time play. And a flag is down. Yeah, Leon Jacobs took a big time shot on the quarterback and it looked like it was head first and the helmet came flying off. So one thing you never know is when the, where the fourth rusher is coming in this defense. Leon Jacobs comes free and looks like he put the crown of his helmet right underneath the chin. We'll see what the call is though. Defense, number 32. The previous play is under further review. Leon Jacobs, a junior from Santa Clarita, California. Brandon Silvers, you see the numbers here. And I don't know, I, I thought he got him square in the numbers. He did get him square in the numbers, but it looked like he led with his head. It it's looked under, like he leads with his head. And launches I, into the defender. And as a, review. as a defensive guy, I love the physicality of Leon Jacobs, but you cannot launch yourself in leading with the head or anywhere near the head as a defender. That's just the rule. It's painful for a linebacker to say, but that's the rule. And if a helmet comes off, obviously there was contact with the chin strap. It is under review. Let's hear from Jeff Zervinsky. After further review, the ruling on the field of targeting is confirmed. Number 32 is disqualified from the remainder of the ball like game. 15 the yard penalty is enforced. Automatic first down. And you can see Paul Chris saying, he hit him in the chest. He does hit him in the chest, but he leads with the head and launches. That's what the targeting call is. When you lead with the head and launch into someone, into a defenseless player, which the quarterback is defenseless when throwing the football, that is targeting. Leon Jacobs ejected from the game here in the first quarter. Chris Orr, the freshman from DeSoto, Texas, now on the field. Handoff, Burks, Burks cuts back inside and wrapped up and brought down at the 40. And Chris Orr is right there along with Derek Tindall well, Neil, and a pick up a six. Neil Brown attacks the weakness right away, goes right after Chris Orr, filling in the void that Leon Jacobs just left. Celine, the ball carrier, and it is second 
and Fuller. And a pickup of three for Ismail Salim, the true freshman from Montgomery, Alabama. What you're going to see out of Troy is when they get a first down or a penalty that leads to a first down, they look at momentum, they're going to tempo. There you have the unbalanced set. Two linemen on the right side of the field. They ran the ball last time. Third and short. Silver's in motion once again. Burks, patient, and bursts ahead for a first down. Oh, the patience that time by Brandon Burks, a senior from Daleville, Alabama. Caputo comes in on the stop along with Joe Schober. Saw Burks take a little stutter step there. Why? Letting his pullers get around, showing great patience, and then got the first down. Really high on Brandon Burks. Makes guys miss in space. Took a long run against NC State to the house where he outflanked the entire Wolfpack defense. The guy's special. Led Troy in rushing the last two seasons. Silvers out of the shotgun once again. Play action with time. Now steps up. Silvers running with it. And he dives forward inside the 25. And Chris Orr, the freshman right there. Orr taking over for Leon Jacobs, who was ejected. You know, you look at Dave Aranda's defense. Rarely do they lose contain on the quarterback. They lost contain there, though. Second and one, and John Johnson with the first down. Brandon Burks worked on right now on the sideline of the Troy Trojans. The impressive drive here for Troy. Silvers on a handoff for Flakes. Flakes. Cuts it back inside, and Orr brings him down at the 11-yard line. Andre Flakes, a sophomore from Milton, Florida, the ball carrier. And a change of pace back, a guy that's got a, a little bit more jet to him than Brandon Burks, but not as much size. They like him as a change of pace guy. Second and three, handoff once again. Flakes straight ahead. The short of the first down marker as Orr comes up and makes a stop. So it's going to be third and short. And you're going to see them substitute another package here where they bring some extra linemen in. On the previous third and shorts, we've seen the unbalanced line. It seems like that's what they're doing to try to get a little bit of advantage here. And they come back out in it again. Silvers. And a whistle. And the flag is down. And a penalty against Troy. False start. Well, that's a big penalty. It goes from third and one to third and six. And they've done that formation a number of times, but they had movement early there. Actually, the right tackle was actually playing right tight end because it was a tackle over. Moved early. Got a little bit antsy. Well, Paul Chris told Jay Wilson before the game he thought this was going to be a test for his team. It has been that early on. Silvers rolls out, fires short, and was Flakes able to come away with it? And it appears as though he was. It was a bad ball though by yeah, Silvers. Didn't give, him a, yeah, didn't give him a chance to make the make a move after the catch. He did catch it. So it looks like they're going to go for it. Fourth and one. There is going to be an official review regarding the catch by Andre Flakes. The youthful Neil Brown. The only FBS coach that is younger than Neil Brown is P.J. Fleck at Western Michigan. And let's take a look here. Silver's rolling out, throws low. Did Flakes come up with it? He says yes. I don't know. Hard to tell there, but the ball doesn't look like it's square in his hands when he brings it up. 
Remember, you need indisputable video evidence, and it appears as though the ball does hit the field turf. Yeah, I believe that's an incomplete pass. It looked like, you see how he's holding the ball yeah. right there? You don't catch a football like that. So he comes up with it like he trapped it. Uh, I think, not that that's proof. The proof is that the ball looked to hit the turf. A closer angle here. Looks like a trap to me. So the ball hits his form and then hits the turf and he brings his arm then under it. Incomplete pass. Tom Herbert, the replay official. In time to get this call. It's fourth and one now as it stands. And that could certainly change the mind of Neil Brown. After further review, the ruling on the field has been reversed. Incomplete pass. Incomplete. Now here's all the placed on the 15 yard Brown. line. Four thousand and six. James Solomon. Their kicker has been suspended for violation of team rules. And their long snapper, Taylor Polk, as well. Both have been suspended for violation of team rules. Now, Underwood, he is a kickoff specialist. And so Ryan Kay, who is the punter, is going to come on and attempt his first field goal of the season. The snapper in this scenario doesn't change because they have Justin Fuller, who is a snapper on field goals and extra points. Polk is a snapper on punts. And the field goal is good. Ryan Kay, a 32-yard field goal. Good for Ryan Kay. And the Trojans are on the board. 7-3 with 1.13 left in the opening quarter. Big Ten football continues tonight in prime time. You'll see either Rutgers Penn State or Iowa taking on Pitt tonight on BTN and BTN to go. Go to btn.com slash game finder to find the game in your market. 7-3 here, a drive lasting 12 plays, 65 yards. Jamerson takes it from his end zone at the 15, quickly to the 20. And tripped up and stopped at the 22-yard line. Let's go to the studio and a mic call. Hey, Matt. 7-3 here, 108 remaining in the opening quarter. The senior from Greenfield, Wisconsin, former walk-on, Joel Stavi. Stavi to the air. And the pass is incomplete, intended for Alex Erickson. Ran that deep comeback route to Erickson, one of Stavi's favorite routes. Looked like he lacked a little bit of juice in on that ball. Couldn't quite get it out there, and the defensive back farmer had a chance to make a play on the ball. We talked to Paul Christ about Stavi. And so many people understand last year a difficult season for him, but he said he really has a player's respect. The handoff of Goomba Wale puts the shoulders square, but he's wrapped up and he is brought back as Kitchens is right there. Well, if you're a running back in your slight, you're not that heavy. If you leave your feet, watch out. You will be hit backwards. Once you leave the ground, you have no power. Lesson learned for Dare Agumbawale. Third and four now. Stavi under center. Agumbawale. The lone running back. Stavi. Agumbawale. Good job blocking. And the pass nearly picked off. Farmer was right there on the scene. Kane got a piece of it as well. And Stavi just really locks into Erickson the whole time. They read his eyes. Got a hand on the football. If he would have waited a little bit, he had Austin Trailer on the throwback to the other side of the field, and it would have been a big play. Demetrius Kane, the junior from Hazelhurst, Mississippi. 
And that's what Troy needed. A stop quickly. Rubin is back at the 35. Drew Meyer, the punter. Here's Rubin. Going for a fair catch and settles underneath it at the 32-yard line. And Troy will come out to work here in this opening quarter. 7-3, to three, 14 seconds remaining in the quarter. A 39-yard punt off of the right foot of Drew Meyer. Back in Madison in a moment to the field and Jay Wilson. Jay? Matt, in the previous timeout, Paul Chris spent most of that timeout talking with the officials, still trying to get an explanation why Leon Jacobs was tossed out of this game for what Chris thinks was a football play. Well, anyway, we go to Chris Orr, the replacement, a true freshman from DeSoto, Texas. He was scheduled to play the third series after Jacobs played the first two series. They think his best days are ahead of him, so Chris Orr now into the spotlight with Jacobs out today. Yeah, in fact, Dave Aranda was telling us yesterday, he said the best is yet to come for the true freshman. Not a handoff. Tanner McAvoy comes in on the stop, and Orr is right there as Burks carries the football. And the first quarter will come to a close after a pickup of four. And Brandon Silvers and the Troy Trojans, 7-3, trailing the 23rd-ranked Wisconsin Badgers as we go to the second. Start of the second quarter from Camp Randall on the campus of the University of Wisconsin. And the Troy Trojans is second down here. the white lines. Quisenberry in motion. Silvers flushed out of the pocket. And he throws it away. And a good decision by Brandon Silvers. He confused Silvers on that play. He didn't know who was actually coming. It was only a four-man rush. They played man coverage behind it. Took away Teddy Rubin, his first option. And he was forced to throw it away because he has flushed out of the top pocket because the front four got some pressure. Chikwe Obasi was there. It's going to be third down now. Silver set an NCAA freshman completion percentage record last year. Going better than 70%. Short pass to John Johnson. Johnson with a first down. Chris Orr comes in and makes the tackle. Now look at them tempo after a first down. It's all predicated after that first down. They're already snapping the football. Wisconsin's trying to get lined up. A gain of 10. Now Silver's on a keeper as he turns it back up inside. And he is tackled by Obasi. And Obasi on the stop. And it's going to be second down now in 10. Silvers has not thrown an interception in now 30 straight quarters. It's the longest active FBS streak. And a whistle and a flag has dropped on the field. And a penalty. Vince Beagle gets a little anxious right here, senses it's a passing down, wants to get a jump on the way to the quarterback. You know, quarterbacks, they don't like it when they call a dead ball whistle unabated the quarterback because they want to go deep, take a shot, because it's a free play for the quarterback. But Up at the line bad. of scrimmage. Second down now for the Trojans. Trailing here 7-3. to three. Burks, the running back. Silvers, a handoff. Burks tries to get to the edge, turns it back up inside. And he is brought down shy of the 45-yard line as Sitchi, along with Connor Sheehy there. And it's going to be third down now. Third and two for the Trojans. Three wide receivers, top of your screen. Silvers now looks to the sideline, changes up the play. Silvers drops back with time, throws short underneath, and the pass is broken up. And it is a true freshman or. 
Silvers checks the quick right, reads man coverage correctly. Man beater route right there. Good play though by the linebacker coming across the long arm rake. And what did Dave Aranda tell us in the third year? Defensive coordinator for Wisconsin, the only holdover for Gary Anderson's staff. He said he has natural instincts to play on that inside. Yeah, he thinks Chris Orr has a really bright future here. There's been a lot of great inside linebackers at Wisconsin, most recently Chris Borland in Dave Aranda's system. The punt off of the right foot of Ryan K sails over Alex Erickson and into the end zone. Badgers! Football when we return. Paul Chris played here, three time letter winner for the Wisconsin Badgers in his first year as a head coach. His father, George, played here as well. 2002 is a tight end coach, 2005 co offensive coordinator, tight end coach, and then the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach before taking the head job at the University of Pittsburgh. When Gary Anderson decided to go to Corvallis, Oregon, hired by legendary athletic director and former head coach here in Barry Alvarez. I think Barry wanted a Wisconsin guy, and he got it in Paul Christ. Deal straight ahead. They have done an outstanding job on the ground here today. William Lloyd on the tackle and a pickup of nine. Taiwan Deal gets straight upfield. Look at the body lean. I've been impressed by the power of Taiwan Deal. Youngster, but playing with great pad level and great pad leverage, and his body lean's always going forward. Second and short. I formation. Stavi on the handoff once again. Deal's going to have the first down as he keeps chugging ahead. And Taiwan Deal. A red shirt freshman in his third game collegiately out of Capitol Heights, Maryland, went to DeMatha High School. And Troy had that power play stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Good play by the linebacker in the defensive front, but it was Deal's leg movement and leg turn that got the first down. Corey Clement, not for a second consecutive game because of a groin injury. And the pass in and out of the hands of Robert Wheelwright. Wheelwright with a drop. You know, they brought a corner blitz on this, so Wheelwright standing there by himself, almost too wide open. The safety was late getting over, and he had yardage to run, but Wheelwright, after the big game last week, with a drop, and he can't be happy with that. 7-3 to three here with 12.05. Remaining in the first half, second and ten. Ogumba Wale in the backfield. Stavi out of the shotgun. Plenty of time on the move. And he fires a strike in Jazz Peavy with the reception from Kenosha, Wisconsin, the sophomore. Troy was in man coverage. Plenty of time. But nobody can get out. Nobody can get off their, their coverage. Vani goes down at the check down on the flat route. Picks up about three. Third and seven. Tanner McAvoy playing both ways. Is in as a wide receiver. They've thrown the ball five times. They've run it 14 times, the Badgers, thus far. Stavi, with time, he throws underneath. And once again, it's PV who's working his way toward... The first down marker. And Peavy up to the 48 yard line. Let's see where they spot the football. Just a and quick, it's going to be short. Quick under route, makes a move and then gets upfield. Lost the ball in, but was actually already down. You see the ball come out, but. Does a good job of getting it back and his right knee may have been down. It is fourth and inches for the Badgers on a handoff. Straight ahead, it's Taiwan Deal and a first down for Wisconsin. Well, the whole stadium knew what play was coming, and that's the lead play. Derek Watt leads it right up in there. Micah Kapoy pulls around, and it's the leg drive again. Met at the first down marker and falls forward. 
Micah Kapoy making his first start last week against Miami Ohio was in for about 40 plays Walker Williams is out this week handoff deal and he cuts back up through the middle and let's send it to Mike Hall in our Chicago studios Matt we've got quarterback in his first series Ohio State losing at home to NIU 7-3 here with 945 remaining in the first half a handoff a Goomba Wale hit behind the line of scrimmage and surging forward trying to get back to the line of scrimmage and Terrace Lewis comes in and it makes a final stop junior from Linden Alabama and his defense a lot better this year last season it took them until the third game to reach 15 tackles for losses six sacks it took him until game five already six sacks and 15 tackles for loss third down now for the Badgers and a handoff deal unable to pick up the first down the defensive coordinator a familiar name Vic Koning, former defensive coordinator for Ron Zook at the University of Illinois. And Vic Koning, one of the best defensive coordinators out there ever has gone. Clemson, Illinois, North Carolina, and now Troy. They've had vast improvements in making plays behind the line of scrimmage, the sacks, the tackles for loss. He really loves that attacking defense with physical linemen up front and attacking linebackers and DBs that can run on the back end. He's actually never coached here out of Wisconsin he did go head to head with Paul Chris who is in the offensive coordinator as Teddy Rubin gets out of the way and nearly tapped back outside of the end zone by Derek Watt but he did go head to head with Paul Chris in Champaign in 2011 Badgers won that game 28-17 after the name of Monty Ball ran for 224 yards The United States Marine Corps leader of the game. You see him right there, Vince Beagle, active in the communities, volunteered more than 40 hours at 19 different events, the juniors since 2013. From Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin, went to Lincoln High School. And certainly somebody that stands out not only on the field, but off of the field as well. Brandon Burks, the ball carrier. The ideal student athlete, Vince Beagle. She heat with the tackle, a gain of four yards. Silvers, quick strike to the near side. And it's going to be a first down as Salim reels it in. Well, we heard from Dave Aranda that Troy is a screen team. And they like to throw wide receiver screens. If they're going to throw wide receiver screens, you got to have great blocking on the perimeter. Watch the receivers lock up on Soldier and Shelton there. He can't get off. They try to get on Tanner McAvoy. McAvoy gets up and out after an eight-yard game. It's interesting in talking to there's a penalty marker down. Penalty marker down. And talking to Neil Brown, he said, this is about just focusing in on us. Not necessarily worrying about the Badgers. And the reason that the Wisconsin had to take a timeout was they were going to call for a legal substitution. When you play a tempo team, that's what happens. You get players stuck in that middle ground, that no man's land between the, the numbers and the sideline. Nobody knows who's in. But to your point, Matt, he really said it is about Wisconsin. It's not about what anybody else does. It's about Wisconsin getting better on their scheme. And they pick up the penalty marker as Wisconsin calls a timeout and let's send it to Mike Hall. So 10. Dave Aranda, the defensive coordinator over the last seven non-conference home games. Uh, opponents have been held to an average of 6.7 points, including three shutouts. A shutout last week, 58 nothing against Miami, Ohio. Silvers, play action, plenty of time, and he throws behind the receiver, but he reels it in. Salim with just a great catch 
as Shelton is there on the stop. Look at the concentration by Salim here. The ball's behind him. He's going to reach that paw up with his right hand, bring the ball in. Great catch. And Soldier even put his hand through. Soldier himself put his hand through the hands of Salim, but he was still able to bring it down. Strong hands. Pickup of nine. Handoff. Burks met by Orr. And Orr is able to stop him just shy of that first down. A marker, it's going to bring up third down now. Good read by Chris Orr. He has action with a pulling tight end the opposite direction. He's not fooled, though. He reads his keys and makes the play. Quick strike and a first down here for Silvers as he connects with Teddy Rubin. We talked about this, the pace and the tempo. And Paul Chris, you know, his number one concern when we talked to him, he said it is pace. Yeah. And the tempo, they've had some success. It's all predicated after first down. But watch out. We've seen a lot of short underneath stuff. They're kind of setting up that deep ball. When you're in the alumni zone, that's the 40 to the 40. Great time to take a shot if you're Troy. Wisconsin DBs, beware. They have four plays of 40-plus yards. Here's Burks getting to the edge. Burks with a first down before Derek Tindall comes up and makes a play. This is the kind of speed that Brandon Burks has. He can break contain. Tindall has the angle, and just Burks goes right around him. Good speed by Burks, and we saw him do that two weeks ago against NC State. Went out the gate for over 60 yards. Averaging 6.2 yards per carry entering today. Flakes is in the backfield, staying in as a blocker. And the pass is overthrown to Quisenberry, Clark Quisenberry. They took the shot. And if you're going to take a shot, you've got to have protection. And you can see Flakes with a nice little cut block on Tendall. And they tried to hit Quisenberry on that shot. They tried to really expose Chris Orr, the young linebacker. Chris Orr right there on the coverage. Second and ten. Silvers out of the pocket. Throws underneath to Nick McLaughlin. And McLaughlin's got a first down. And Tanner McAvoy comes in to make a play. McAvoy, as we mentioned, not only playing... As the starter at safety, but also wide receiver, playing both ways. And during the course of this week, Paul Chris said, you know what, there's flow at practice. We have our ones take on the twos offensively, and then the twos against the ones defensively. So he said it worked out fine. He was able to be on both sides of the football. First and ten. Nearly picked off by Shelton as Sojourn... Shelton breaks it up, pass intended for Jarvis Bentley. You know, you hear a lot about angles in football. This is the correct angle to take. Watch his angle, puts his foot in the ground, and meets the receiver right when the ball gets there. That's sound football. Taking correct angles, you can tell they coach him up here in Wisconsin. It's always been a program that has prided themselves on developing players. They do such a great job under Barry Alvarez. Of course, Brett Bielema, Barry Anderson. Now Paul Chris and a penalty marker is down. That has been one of the things pass intended for Teddy Rubin that has stood out here in the first half for the Badgers. Absolutely. We saw Silvers there take another shot. And I think it was the pressure that made him overthrow. Teddy Rubin. The flag is going to go against against the Troy Trojans. It's pass interference against Troy. And usually when there's pass interference against the offense, there can be an illegal pick downfield. Let's take a look at it here. You can see there, there's a pick play up top. And if you look at it to me, that's a little, I don't see it that much. I see the receiver running the route. They're in a man coverage scheme. When you have man coverage, be aware you're going to get picked. Now it's a second and forever. Second and 25. Silvers under pressure. Throws it underneath to Bentley. Bentley 
Up to the 41 yard line before Chikwe Obasi comes from behind and makes a stop. And that front of you know, the Badgers, and talking to Dave Aranda, he said Chikwe Obasi, he leads that group. He's good up front, a motor that doesn't stop. Says he plays with a temperament. He can get a little upset when things don't go, and he fires up the whole defense. That's the guys you, guys you want in the trenches in the Big Ten. Man, you know how that is. Oh, yeah. You come at him like a pack of wild hyenas. Was that the quote? Exactly. <laughs> Silvers throws underneath to Burks, and on third and long, the Badger defense comes up big as Tyndall is there to make the stop. Chikwe Obase. My goodness. We just hit his name. We said he plays with the Timberman. Watch him play right here. He reads screen. says, what, this lineman's not blocking me? What's going on? He sees the running back. Breaks out of the pass rush, makes the tackle. That's what you want a defensive lineman to do. Tyndall came underneath, and then Obasi finished the play. And the screen game was something Dave Aranda was concerned about. And you see Neil Brown's not happy about the way their line played that. Ryan Kelly, can he keep this one from sailing into the end zone? Erickson calls for a fair catch. It's back at the 70-yard line. 7-3. to three. Troy right there against the 23rd ranked Wisconsin Badgers with 317 remaining in the first. 7-3 to three, Wisconsin leading Troy. Let's go back. Last time Troy faced a Big Ten opponent was 2008. Trojans came close to a historic update. Jamie Hampton connected with Jarrell Jernigan for a 45-yard strike to make it a 14-10 game entering the fourth. However, then Jarrell Pryor came through. He found Ryan Hartline late in the fourth to seal it 28-10. It was nearly an upset. You know, they were close. Close. And Troy always has some athletes. In that part of the yeah. country, some of the best high school footballs yeah. play. Wide open. And a first down and up to the 30-yard line is Wheelwright. He hangs on to it this time as Jalen Roundtree is there in a pickup of 20 yards. And you wonder, how do Wisconsin receivers get that wide open? Well, when you got to respect the run that much, you're so aggressive as a defense thinking run, 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 that everybody forgets about him. All the eyes are on the QB. Nobody feels Wheelwright in space. He's wide open. Stavi last week, 19-30, 236 yards, three touchdown passes. And an interception. Stavi with plenty of time back across the middle. And he hits his tight end. Austin Trailer, Trailer, the senior from Columbus, Ohio. And he stopped by Montrez Kitchens. I really like Austin Trailer. Physical blocker, good pass receiver. Flag on the play, though. Looks like Tyler Roberts' helmet came off. Personal foul. Hands in the face. Offense, number 61. 15-yard penalty, previous spot, first down. Tyler Merritts. 44. From Troy, remain in the ballgame. His helmet came here. off you can due see to the foul. Merritts like, right there. Yep. Gets his hand up into the face. And when the helmet came off, the referee had no choice but to call it. I think if the helmet stays on, it's a no call. You don't mean to do that as an offensive lineman. You're just trying to play physical. But kudos to Tyler Roberts, who kept his feet moving and gave effort on the play. He's going to back him up to the 15-yard line, first and 25. Agumba Wale, the running back, play action. Down the middle, it's Erickson, and Erickson nearly gets to the 40-yard line in the first down of marker as LaMarcus Farmer is there. Play action brings up Terrace Lewis, the linebacker. They, then they throw right behind him to Alex Harrison in that curl zone, right on the hash. Erickson just sits on the hash, waits for the ball wide open. Big game for the Badgers. 21 yards. Second down now and four. Stavi. Throws underneath to Jazz Peavy. He was pressured, and he was able to find Peavy. 
And Lloyd is there to make the tackle. He had 15 tackles at North Carolina State. Did William Lloyd in a pickup of a first and 10 now. And Peavy got out of bounds. 142 left here in the second quarter. And remember, as they continue to operate, they do have a big threat. And Rafael Gaglianoni, their kicker, Stavi down the middle once again. Erickson, what a huge, huge play for the Badgers as Alex Erickson is finally dragged down by Farmer. Deep post strike to route to Erickson. Goes outside and then comes back in, hits him in stride, and then finishes the play. Down on a 10-yard line with a minute 10 left to play in the first half. Talking to Joe Rudolph, the offensive coordinator, he said, you know, Alex Erickson, he's so tough. He said he makes the big play at the big moment, and they had one right there. Stavi to the end zone, and he overthrows Erickson. Coming up at halftime, see Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report with Dave Rebson, Coach D, and Howard. We look forward to it. A lot of action. Northwestern with a big win on the road, Jay. And Duke under David Cutcliffe yeah. has been a strong program of late. To go in there on Tobacco Road and get the W, a 3 0 start for the Wildcats. Second down now. Handoff to Reggie Love, and Love is forced out of bounds at the five-yard line, maybe call it the four, as Farmer and Lloyd are there. They're going to mark it at the four and a pickup of six. So it's going to be third and goal now. If you're Wisconsin, you absolutely want a touchdown here. If you come away with a field goal, that's just going to give Troy more confidence, only down one score at the end of the half. Stavi, Goomba Wale, the running back. Out of the shotgun. PV and Erickson, top of your screen. Wheel right to your right. Looking left. Stavi, forced out of the pocket. Stavi with room to the end zone. Touchdown, Wisconsin. Stavi not known for his legs, but bought some time, broke the contain of the Troy defense, and the defender for Troy was in a rock and a hard place. He could either defend Peavy or he could come up and stop Stavi. Well, he defended Peavy, and Stavi took it in for six points. The extra point is good by Rafael Gaglianoni. A sophomore from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and it's 14 to 3. 101 total yards on the ground for the Badgers. Stavi flushed out of the pocket, sees the end zone, and the Badgers are on the board once again. 14 to 3, 39 seconds left in the second. Day later tonight, college football is on Fox Sports 1 as the 12th ranked UCLA Bruins battle BYU. Coverage begins at 10.30 Eastern on Fox Sports 1. BYU, of course, folks in Big Ten country, you think about that Nebraska game. Uh, the Cougars coming away with the Hail Mary and the victory. They did it last week against Boise State. Where well, the Bruins look good, though. Endicott to kick off. Ruben is back. Along with DeAndre Douglas, the true freshman from Madison, Alabama. This is Ruben. He's going to bring it out of the end zone at the 15 to the 20. And knocked out of bounds at the 22-yard line. 14 to 3 here. The Badgers... 34 seconds left. This is a quick strike, as we've mentioned, offense. 
They have five TDs of four plays or less in under one minute. So they got 34 seconds here, Jay. 34 seconds. They've got three timeouts. Now, remember, their kicker isn't playing today. They're starting kicker. So you probably got to get to the 20 or 25 to have a legitimate shot at a field goal with your backup kicker. Let's see what Neil Brown decides to do. I'm going to hand off. I think he's going to play it safe. 14-3. Not going to take a chance here. And they've been competitive this half. Very no doubt. competitive. Move the ball well. You know, it wasn't until last drive when Wisconsin really threw the ball that Wisconsin was able to move the ball consistently. You know, 101 rush yards in the first half for Wisconsin. That might be over 100 yards, but that's not Wisconsin S, what we're used to, especially against a defense like Troy. 14 3 at the end of the first half. Here from Camp Randall, the Badgers with the lead over the Trojans. Coming up, the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report with Dave, Jerry, and Howard. Getting set for the start of the third quarter here from Camp Randall, 14 to 3. Badgers with the lead. All right, time now to check out the Quicken Loans quarterback comparison, Jay. Yeah, and Joel Stavi started slow in this game. But came back on that last drive, finished well, one rushing TD. And, and Brandon Silvers, those numbers are pretty typical for him. Not a lot of long passes, high percentage throws. And they've been able to move the ball a little bit better on the ground, I think, than most people expected. Look for Stavi, though, to continue his play into the third quarter. Brandon Silvers, he's taken a couple of big shots. Yeah, none today. None bigger than that one earlier by Leon Jacobs. That knocked Jacobs out of the game for targeting. Silver's, though, a gutty guy. I mean, set that record last year for a freshman in completion percentage. And he's taken some shots, but he's hung in there and tried to make the throws downfield to give this Troy Trojan offense a chance against this Dave Aranda coordinated defense. He hasn't thrown an interception entering today in his last 155 pass attempts. And that is second best in the FBS. Teddy Rubin and DeAndre Douglas back for the Trojans. And Andrew Endicott to kick off here. And second half is underway. 14 to 3, 23rd ranked Badgers with the lead. Taken at the goal line. This is Rubin. Rubin trying to. Shed a would be tackler able to advance to the 21 yard line, and then, and then Jack Sitchi is able to make the stop. And there is a flag on the play during the return, holding return team number eight, 10 yard penalty for the run. First down the 10, Troy Jeff Servinsky, uh, referee. Holding, yep. and it's going to push Troy back. All right, let's send it down to a third member of our broadcast team, Jay Wilson. Jay? Matt, I had a chance to speak to both coaches at halftime, and Paul Chris still isn't pleased with the explanation he got on why Leon Jacobs was ejected for that hit in the first half. He was told the crown of Jacobs' helmet hit the quarterback's helmet. He didn't agree with it, but the good news for Wisconsin, Chris Orr, his replacement, leads them with seven tackles. And for Neil Brown, the Troy head coach, he says his guys held up pretty well against the run. He said they were a confident team coming in, so this is not a complete surprise to them. And the interesting thing that he said, they saved some things for the second half. We'll see what they are. All right. You know, in this, in talking to Neil Brown, he said it comes at the perfect time for him to have a bye week after this and then they'll take on in-state rival University of South Alabama Jaguars, which is a big game for them. And a handoff from Silvers. And the stop, Tyndall and Beagle. You run that kind of motion, sometimes it can mess up the timing of a run play. The timing was messed up on that run play, and Beagle took advantage of it. Burks. 
A one yard gain, 11 carries for 44 yards. Out of the shotgun. Four wide receivers set. Burks in the backfield with the quarterback, stays in as a blocker. Quickly to the near side, he connects with Jarvis Bentley, and Shelton is there. And that's going to move the chains in a first down now for Troy. Yeah, and they're going to tempo off this first down. But you don't see this much of the Dave Aranda defense. Soldier and Shelton was given up the hitch route. Just gave it up, broke on the play, and makes the tackle. Not before first down, though. KD Edenfield in motion. And the handoff to Burks. Burks wrapped up just shy of the first down marker. Michael Caputo comes in. And he is the glue on that defensive captain. So smart. Dave Miranda says he, he gets in and comes out the gate. That almost came out the gate there. And Caputo saved it on a, a from being a, a big play. Chris Orr comes in and makes a stop. Chris Orr led the Badgers in tackles in the first half with seven. Of course, he comes in for Leon Jacobs, who is ejected. And it's interesting in the recruiting process, he's from DeSoto, Texas, and with the presence of J.J. Watt with the Houston Texans, he said it was the first thing that came up during the recruiting process. You may start to see some more players from the Lone Star State free play here. And reeled in by John Johnson. And Tyndall there. Markers down in Silvers. And a pickup of 24 yards. Let's check in with Jeff Servinsky. Offside. Defense number 34. Penalty Klein. Result of play. First down. Chishwe. Obasi. Yep. Jumps off. And you're exactly right, man. A free play. So what's he do? He takes a shot downfield. Yep. Turns into a big play to John Johnson. Well, back to J.J. Watt and the Watt factor. Yeah. I mean, the first thing that comes up in the recruiting process, if you're in Texas, who wants to go to Wisconsin? Well, if J.J. Watt's playing yeah, under the premier defensive lineman in the NFL, everybody knows about Wisconsin. Yeah, now all of a sudden, that's a place to go on the recruiting trail. Trying to shed some tacklers, Burks, but he's wrapped up by Schobert, Joe Schobert, is there, Schobert. along with T.J. Edwards. Edwards... A red shirt freshman. They call him Joe the show. Joe made the initial play, made Burks bounce. Didn't make the play, but got up, hustled, made the play for a tackle for loss. Second down and long. Silver's now up to the line of scrimmage. Andre Flakes, the running back. Silver's now fires. And the catch by Bentley, and they are going after Shelton. Yeah, they're starting to pick on him a little bit. Soldier and Shelton off the ball a little bit. Same hitch route we saw, and they're having Teddy Rubin, Rubin the inside receiver, run off Tanner McAvoy, so it leaves Shelton alone. Pick up of 12. It's third and one. Silver's on a keeper, and he's going to have a first down, an impressive drive here by the... Wisconsin, or rather the Troy Trojans against the Wisconsin Badgers. Oren Schobert there on the scene. Well, they said they saved some things. Brandon Silvers has let, yet to keep the ball in the zone read. They waited until a short yardage situation, situation to get the first down. Dave Aranda, the defensive coordinator for the Badgers. Silvers. Stripped by Schobert. Scooped up by Caputo. Great pressure from Joe the Show. Joe the Show working the edge like those outside linebackers do. And this defense goes as the outside linebackers go. Joe sherbert has been big plays all day long. Watch him use his hands. He can't quite get to the QB. Beats the tackle right off the ball and uses that right arm to rake out the ball. Great ball awareness, and Caputo's there. If Caputo stays on his feet, that's six points. Schobert with a big-time play there, scooped up by Michael Caputo. You know, talk about Dave Aranda. 
a guy that has had great success here at Wisconsin. Look at that, fifth in Power 5 conferences and points per game allowed. And part of his defense is the play of the outside linebackers. How about Joe the Show Schober on this play? Comes off your right side of your screen, left side of your screen there. Comes off on Antonio Garcia, knocks the hands down, then knocks the ball out from the quarterback Silvers and Caputo on the recovery. Schobert, first force fumble since season opener a year ago against the LSU Tigers. Agumba Wale, the ball carrier. And Schobert, third force fumble of his career, and Kitchens is there. Agumba Wale looks to cut the ball back, and he's had some success with that. Troy, however, made the adjustments at halftime, stopped it there for a three, four yard gain. Staffy and the Badgers take advantage. Caputo on the fumble recovery. Hand off of Goomba Wale, a big hole spinning around. And Kitchens there once again along with William Lloyd. His safety coming up, making the play, and also Sarah's Lewis there and a pick up a seven. Basic lead play, they got hat on hat meaning they got a lineman for each defender, and then Derek Watt cleans up the rest. Straight ahead for the first down. First and ten now. Play action, rolling out. Throws underneath, and Watt goes to the 50-yard line. They're going to spot it right at the 49. Kitchens once again in a pickup of five. Derek Watt brother J.J. Watt, the fullback. Joel Stavi had Austin Trailer open on a deep corner route, wide open, and decided to go for the short drop-off. On film, he's going to think, oh, should have hit Trailer deep. 8-12 for 139 yards. Second and five and a handoff. Dare Agumbawale and Garrett Peak is there on the stop wonder in a game like this how long Troy's defense can hold up yeah. they've held up pretty well for a while now but with that offense not being able to finish drives the turnover here third and one you can expect some more power and lead coming right at you in the short yarded situations Taiwan deal the running back handoff deal puts the shoulder down and runs right through kitchens and when you have that safety up there making all the plays that Kitchens is making here in the third, it's kind of leaning toward what you were talking about, right? Absolutely. One cut, cuts it back, gets upfield. If your safety is your leading tackler against Wisconsin, you're in trouble. It means the ball's getting to the second level. Deal, 220 pounds. And Kitchens, 180. Tanner McElvoy in a quarterback and McElvoy turns a corner so talented so athletic last week took one snap at quarterback as well and played safety played wide receiver can he kick <laughs> he can do it all you know they had on the right hash simply ran a quarterback sweep to the left you don't see a guy that can move like that at that height much yeah. six six Tanner McElvoy six six two thirty one a senior once again, McAvoy running. McAvoy with a first down and more. McAvoy stays on his feet, and he lunges into the end zone for a touchdown. 32 yards for Tanner McAvoy. Badgers on the board. Well, you want a guy like Tanner McAvoy to provide a spark, and did he just do that? The great thing about running the quarterback, you get an extra man to block. That extra man was the difference as McAvoy took it to the house. First touchdown of the season for McAvoy. Rafael Gaglianoni on for the extra point, and it's now 21-3. to three. It all started with Schobert, and then... The fumble recovery by Caputo, and it leads to this. McElvoy, quarterback, into the end zone. 21-3.
And let's send it down to Jay Wilson. Jay. He starts at wide receiver. He starts at free safety. And he runs it in from 32 yards out of the Wildcat formation. Last week he had 73 snaps on offense and defense. A majority of them on defense. But Paul Chris told us that they weren't sure what Tanner McAvoy's ceiling was because he didn't play at all in the fourth quarter last week against Miami. But boy, he is an effective weapon both on offense and on defense. He is Mr. Versatility. He even wears maybe an NCAA record. This is his fourth uniform number. He started out with 17. He was five. He was number 11 in the Outback Bowl last year. Now he's number three. Tanner McAvoy can do it all. No question. Ruben picks it up. He's at the 22-23 yard line. Let's go back to that 32-yard rushing touchdown for McAvoy. And when you can run the quarterback, you gain an extra block. That extra blocker is that running back. And the running back throws a block that helps spring the quarterback. He got 10 blockers. Instead, the quarterback hand off to the running back. Quarterback never blocks anybody. Then he only got nine blockers. So you get an extra guy, and you get a guy that's big like McAvoy that can finish and get into the end zone. One of the reasons why he has changed numbers on numerous occasions is because he plays both ways and you can have duplicate numbers an offensive number three you can have an offensive uh, defensive number three and obviously three was one of the numbers that they didn't have a duplicate to on either side hand off to Burks and Burks trying to grind out some yards there Stopped down the inside by T.J. Edwards and Connor Sheehy there. There is a flag down. Illegal formation. Five minutes in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. So not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Had five men in the backfield, which means they didn't have... Seven on the line of scrimmage. Let's see. You can see the receiver right here. He's off the line of scrimmage. He needs to be up here. And that's why they have five men in the backfield. Fourth penalty, totaling 35 yards for Troy. Burks in the backfield. Bunch set. Wide receivers. Three. Bottom of your screen. Silvers on a handoff for Burks and Burks just no place to go and another penalty marker is down as Jesse Hayes comes in and he makes a stop so we'll hear from Jeff Servinsky once again holding offense number 71 10 yard penalty. Luke First Lawrence, down. the junior from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, the left guard. And maybe this is you know, something you touched upon a little bit earlier, just you know, getting worn out a little bit. Right there, there he is, Luke Lawrence. Let's watch him. You don't see holding players this, but you can see he basically tackles the defensive lineman. You can't get your hand outside the shoulder pad and drag down. I don't know if he was Greco Roman wrestling or if he was playing football. First and 25. For Neil Brown's Troy Trojans here. Ruben in motion. Handoff for Burks. Burks sheds one would be tackler, turns, trying to get free from McAvoy and Orr, but they're able to catch up to him. And Orr there along with Tanner McAvoy. So McAvoy with his seventh rushing touchdown of his career. And then he comes up and makes a big play here. Hard to get an edge on this defense. We saw his Tyndall set the edge. And he breaks it back. The pursuit by Orr. And then Mr. Everything, Tanner McAvoy makes the tackle. This guy's everywhere on the field. Yeah. True freshman Chris Orr. He's working the long sleeves already here on a 68 degree day. And the pass incomplete. And tender for John Johnson. You know, Chris just needs to wait about a month or so. <laughs> maybe, maybe a little, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're a young guy, keep the swagger down a little <laughs> well, bit. It's not an even uh, the swagger. Uh, I think you just, you know, it's a little bit cool. Well, today. yeah, the swagger, it is a little he's, bit. He's uh, from DeSoto, Texas. Yeah, and, you know. you're right. He certainly hasn't affected his play. No, his play, he's been the leading tackler. 
Now getting back to Tanner McAvoy, Dave Aranda said, you know, he's got a really laid back personality that can go between switching on offense at quarterback, receiver, and coming back to defense with ease. Another incomplete pass. And Neil Brown not pleased. So what happens there, John Johnson actually got pushed off his route. Darius Hillary got physical at the line of scrimmage. You can see the coach is very upset. Why? Because he got beat up at the line of scrimmage by the veteran corner, Darius Hillary. Replay fourth down. I'm going to replay fourth down. Real quick with Chris Orr with the long sleeves. It's over 90 degrees, about 92 degrees right now in DeSoto, Texas. Okay? So 60, it's a cool day for him. Cool day. I, I, just just wait till late October, November, right? Well, Kier Brandle's <laughs> been known for a chilling wind to come off the lake. Wait till you see Minnesota. And a fair catch by Erickson at the 38-yard line. 21 to 3. Two freshman Chris Orr doing the job. Defensively, their top tackler. BTN has you covered all week long as we get you up to speed on all things college football. First at 6 Eastern, join the conversation on BTN Live. And we cover the entire college football landscape on. Big Ten football and beyond weeknights on BTN and BTN to go. You can see Jay Lehman in studio. 21 to 3, 524 left here in the third. Stavi under center. Play action. Stavi looks downfield, has a receiver, and a great grab by Alex Erickson. Again, they do a run fake right at the linebacker. They pull up the linebacker. They throw right behind him on the hash to their man, Alex Erickson. Watch the run fake. Watch 13 your screen. He comes up. Then they dump it right behind him in between the linebacker and the safety. That's how you do play action. Executed perfectly, and it always works better when you got a solid run game. Pick up a 21 yards. Deal. The running back. Taiwan Deal. And Dio's going to grind out some yards as he is stopped at the 37-yard line. And Rooker, Darius Rooker, is there on the stop along with Lucas. And a pickup of five. True freshman Rooker from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Second down and five. Stavi. Handoff once again. Deal wrapped up, and let's send it to Mike Hall in our Chicago studio. Second half. Here it's 21 to three. 23rd ranked Badgers facing a third and four from the 35 of the Trojans underneath, and a big open field tackle by Darren. Reddick, but Reddick grabbing the left side, left arm. Troy Fumagalli on the reception. And Reddick still down. Aaron Reddick, the senior from Houston, Texas. Just a simple crossing route to Fumagalli. Hits him in stride, and then that left shoulder really hits the hip of Fumagalli. It looks like he's grabbing it. On the field assisting Darren Reddick. We'll take a break and be back right after this. Gaglianoni, four of five on the year. He has missed one, a 34 yarder. That was against Alabama. His long for the season, 43 yards. Is it enough? Had the length, but missed it. Missed it wide. 52-yard attempt. You really got to drive the ball. It's a low kick because he's got to get it there. He just hooked it left a little bit.
Maglianoni from Brazil went to Chattanooga, Tennessee to play at Baylor Prep, a boarding school there. And a fellow classmate, he went there to play some soccer and said, hey, you know what, you should try playing football. And it has worked out. Silvers, pump fakes, now down the sideline. And the pass intended for Ruben is broken up. Tyndall and McElvoy there. Dave Aranda talked about that. The screen game's so strong. They run it, they run it, they run it. He pump fakes on the screen, then looks for his man Ruben down the sideline. Great job of reading the eyes by Tyndall. When the eyes get big, you put your hands through the receiver's hands and gets a PBU. That's a pass breakup for Tyndall. I think Tyndall's played really well on the back end, made a lot of plays, and been very sound in coverage for the Badgers. Silvers finds Jarvis Bentley. And Bentley is dragged down with Shelton there, Beagle, and McAvoy. A host of Badgers. That's going to move it now. Bentley's had his way with Soldier and Shelton. Yep. When they've isolated him, the bigger body on Shelton, he's been able to body him and make some plays to move the ball down the field for Troy. Handoff. Burks getting to the edge, and a penalty marker is down as a 6'6". Senior from New Jersey, McAvoy comes in to make the stop. Number 53. And it's going to go against Troy. And penalties here in this third quarter started to rack up. Antonio Garcia so hard to get the edge on this defense because those outside linebackers always have leverage on you can see he grabs jersey there and when the defender tries to pull away you gotta let go because that's what the uh, referee is going to see saw Garcia grab the jersey going to be 10 yards back for the Troy offense six penalties 54 yards Antonio Garcia the junior from Atlanta Georgia on the left side here in the third quarter Luke Lawrence a Penalty uh, holding Garcia as well. They throw underneath now to Bentley. Bentley trying to get free of Shelton. And then Sitchi along with Beagle there. Penalties have really hurt the Troy offense. They've gotten a lot of first and longs, second and longs because of penalties. You know, Sojourn Shelton's been picked on, but made a good play there on the tunnel screen. Really attacked Bentley on that play. Grabbed a leg and waited for the Calvary to come and clean it up. Jay, four penalties here in the third for 34 yards. Penalty marker down, free play down the sideline and out of the reach of uh, John Johnson. As Darius Hillary was there, and here's the Zoa Badgers offsides. Five yard Brandon penalty. Silvers has Second a really down. good hard count. That's the third or fourth time he's been able to draw those outside linebackers offsides. You can see right there, definitely in the neutral zone. And when a QB sees that, he's taking a shot. Down the line against Darius Hillary one-on-one. -on -one. Wasn't able to connect, but it was a free play nonetheless. Sitchi, the sophomore from Somerset, Wisconsin. Second down and long. Second and 13. Silvers under pressure, and he is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. And Connor Sheehy right there. You know who makes this play is Vince Beagle. He gets off the line quickly. They call that a takeoff. And watch him force Brandon Silvers to step back into the pocket right into Connor Sheehy. You know, sometimes it's not the guy who makes the sack that caused the sack. It was Vince Beagle forcing the quarterback to step up. And the big fella gets excited. Got a little rise right there. Don't know if Bo Ryan wants to win the hoops team yet. <laughs> but he showed some jumping ability. Silvers under pressure once again in a big time hit as Salim brings it in. And a penalty marker is down. Silvers shaken up, but the marker's not there. It's down the field where Salim was hit. And a pickup of 13, and we'll hear from Servinsky. Personal foul. Targeting. Defense. 
Number 25, by rule, the previous play is under further review. Targeting called against Wisconsin. Saw Leon Jacobs ejected from the game in the first quarter. What do you see here? I really don't think you can throw out Timbo for targeting right there. I, you can see the receiver Going goes down, down yeah. and his head gets into the into the plane of the shoulder pad, but he's still not leading with the head. It didn't look like Tyndall hit him with any part of the head. His head fell into where his shoulder pad was. You can't eject a player for that. I think if you want to call a personal foul for a blow to the head, you can call that. But now that now the player is defenseless, but you can see he does extend a forearm into the head. It's it, not a helmet to helmet. It's just that left shoulder going into the receiver, Ismail Salim. So he does extend his forearm into the head, but the receiver dropped down into the After plane. further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Number 25, which is qualified for the remainder of the ball game. 15 yards will be added to the end of the catch. Automatic first down. So Tyndall, the second badger, that has been ejected from this game. And you have to think it's because the forearm was extended into the head of a defenseless player. A tough call, though, as the receiver dropped down into the plane that Tyndall was trying to hit him on. Tough call for the Badgers. And they're not only going to lose Tyndall for this half, but the first half of Hawaii next week now that he's been ejected. Hand off to Burks. And the stop that time, Alec James. And it's interesting talking to Dave Randa. He said Derek Tyndall, a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, has had a great camp, right? He had a great, he just needs to transfer it to the field. And I think today, you know, Dave Randa was getting that from Derek Tyndall and then unfortunately ejected from the game. He was playing great. He was one of the better defenders. Him and Chris Orr had really set the tempo for the defense. The reality is that was a really tough call to go against Tyndall. He, he just didn't mean, I don't think, to hit, but he did hit the quarter, but hit, hit in the head. End of the third quarter. And you know what that means in Madtown? The jump around. You'll see it when we return. Hey Badger fans, this is Hillary Knight from the U.S. Olympic hockey team. Get up on your feet. It's time for the greatest tradition in college football. It's time to jump around. Start of the fourth quarter here. 21 to 3. Silvers and Troy trying to take advantage of the Badgers defense. A pass complete to Rubin. And Chris Orr, leading tackler for the Badgers today with his 11th tackle 
Interestingly enough, time of possession favors Troy, a quick striking team. We have not seen that. They have been able to sustain drives, although they trail 21 to 3. Wisconsin's defense not able to get off the field. Huh, Chris Orr, though, I like that guy's instincts. Made some plays all over the field, especially for a young linebacker. Third and nine. Third and long now. Silvers out of the shotgun. Fires down the field, and he overthrows John Johnson. As Natrell Jamerson was there. Jamerson, a wide receiver last year. He was moved to defensive back prior to the start of this season. Yeah, Dave Aranda admitted to us. He said, you know, when they're in the coaching change, I thought, who are some athletes I could grab from <laughs> offense and get up right. on defense? And he made the pitch to Paul Chris. You know, I think Natrell Jamerson would be a better fit at corner. Well, I don't know how the offensive coaches felt about that, but he's at corner. It's, it's, it's worked. He went to Jamerson and said, hey, you want to be the corner? Sure. 47-yard field goal attempt by Ryan Kay, and it is short. Remember, Troy does not have Jed Solomon. He was suspended for violation of team rules and a field goal kicker. All right, let's send it to Mike Hall. Mike? But again, defense giving them the lead. So Ohio State there and here in Madison, 21 to 3. Stavi, not a handoff. Nagumba Wale with a big chunk of yards before Peak and Lewis come in to make the stop. Good patience by Agumba Wale. Let his blockers and his pullers get up in front and then showed some good burst and good power through the hole for a good pickup on first down. This is where Wisconsin, in the, in the past, has really put teams away. They control the ball. They control the time of possession in the fourth quarter. They run the clock, not allowing teams to make a comeback. Hand off once again. Agumba Wale. Agumba Wale seeing minutes with Corey Clement out. Once again with a groin injury and a pickup of nine. Taiwan deal 12 carries 72 yards and averages six a carry. Agumba Wale 12 carries for 76 yards. Second and short, great time for play action to take a shot if you're Wisconsin. Stavi, handoff once again. And the Badgers are going to have the first down with Deal. It's a season high in rushing yards for the Badgers, 190. And this is against Alabama. Corey Clement, their starting running back to junior from New Jersey. Yeah, obviously looks a little bit hampered running around. They said he hurt it initially in camp. Then re-injured it against Alabama. It hasn't been himself all year. He's a special back. Handoff. And spun around is Deal. And there is Clement. They said, look, it, he's close. Hope is that he'll return next week against Hawaii. But remember, October 3rd, you have your first conference game. That's against Iowa. So maybe you, know, you won't see him until then. I think you've got to take all the precaution you can with yeah. your best offensive player as much as you want him back. If he's not ready to go, he's not ready to go, and they're not going to push it. And Paul Chris was pretty adamant about that in his press conference this week. Agumba Wale trying to get to the outside, and he is spun around by Lucas. Justin Lucas from Aberdeen, Mississippi, spins him around and pushes him back. And this is where, as you mentioned, the Badgers just want to keep using that clock, but it's going to set up now third down and long for Joel Stavi. He's done a solid job just managing the game. He's had some big plays downfield to Erickson. They wanted to establish a run. They've been able to do that. McAvoy in as a receiver. Let's see what Stavi and the Badgers can come up with here. Stavi throws underneath. The penalty marker is down, and Agumba Wale is brought down at the 
looked like Michael Dieter. It's going to get called for a holding. Holding. Offense. Number 61. Penalties decline. Third down. Look at Tyler. Three Merits. Correction. Tyler Merits. Fourth down. So Merits going against Roberts. As you can see yep. right here, their yep. best defensive player for Troy. He does an inside move on Merritts and then grabs him with that big hook around the neck. And you can see the effort of Roberts is what exposes the hole. They really like Merritts, though. Said he's one of the most solid offensive linemen they got right now in a position group that's been in flux and inconsistent by Wisconsin football standards. Drew Meyer to punt. Ruben is back. And Meyer end over end and another penalty marker is down here with 1041 remaining in the fourth 33 yard punt. however as i mentioned we'll hear from jeff servinsky here momentarily illegal motion kicking team helen's decline troy's ball first down and 10. Now michael caputo Media was in motion out. going towards the line of scrimmage this isn't that Canadian football. You're not allowed to do that. So there's the penalty decline. We'll be back in a moment for the rest of the fourth quarter. The Dr. Pepper play of the game. Tanner McAvoy on a 32-yard run. Touchdown run. Yeah, I can do it all in the QB sweep. And watch him finish here and stretches for the end zone in six points. And that's the one-of-a-kind Dr. Pepper play of the game. First down and 10. Ruben in motion. Silvers now goes up to the line of scrimmage. Changes up the play. 21 to 3. Wisconsin here in the fourth. And a give to Burks. And Burks is going to pick up five yards on the carry before he is stopped by Hillary. Burks 17. Attempts on the ground running for 62 yards. It's second and five. And Burks once again cut down this time by Jake Kiefer, who's a former linebacker. They have moved up front. And they build them here in Wisconsin, taking former linebackers, yeah. put some size on them, make them into defensive tackles. That's one of the we were talking to Paul Christ about yesterday. He said, look, we've always been known as a place that can develop players. Few of them come in the door ready-made as freshmen, but they're made in the weight room. Yeah, no doubt. And, and a lot will come here as walk-ons, and the next thing you know, they emerge as starters and key contributors. And Ruben able to reel that one in. T.J. Edwards right there. And Richard freshman. Yeah, it's interesting. You... You look at this defense, and we're talking to Dave Aranda about this. You know, up front, you get some sophomores, you know, redshirt freshmen, and then some, you know, junior, a couple of seniors, and then the linebacking core is pretty young. And, yeah. and then you have some veterans on the back end. Yeah, they sandwich in those young guys. And that was a big thing in the Alabama game with Caputo getting injured the third play with concussion wasn't able to help out Edwards and Jacobs with the call, and they had some bus, especially in the run game. Timeout taken, fourth and one. Neil Brown will call over his offensive unit here to talk to him. Next Saturday, it's another full slate of action at noon. Michigan State, Rutgers, and Purdue take the field then at 3 30 the nittany lions and gophers are at home and then in prime time it's a badgers taking on hawaii you'll be here and and some will see northwestern taking on a ball state that's where i'll be next saturday on btn and btn to go go to btn.com slash game finder to find the game in your market let's go down to jay wilson jay well the announcement is that a fire alarm has gone off in the building now I've heard that fire alarm here during the week, and sometimes it's for real and sometimes it's not. 
but it's a loud beeping noise and the announcement was just made a recorded message over the PA system that a fire alarm has gone off in the building and everybody's going is it for real or not so as soon as we find out we'll let you know well we're starting to see fans head to the exits here at Camp Randall and you saw the fans starting to do that once we heard the loud beeping noise and some communication there with Jeff Servinsky and officials here at Camp Randall. Uh, the players on the field. And there's Chris Orr, the freshman from DeSoto, Texas. And the Troy players still on the field as well. This has been the year of the delay. We've had numerous lightning delays, some games canceled. The reality is we thought there'd be no delay in this kind of weather, but we have a fire alarm. Fire in the kitchen? Was it? I don't know. That's it. All right, and so we're going to take a timeout on the field, and we'll be back right after this. Back here at Camp Randall, the delay, we heard the fire alarms here and people being told to evacuate Camp Randall. And with the latest on the situation, let's go ahead and send it down to Jay Wilson. Jay? Well, it was a false alarm. The uh, fire alarms went off. There was some talk of a fire in a kitchen area somewhere, but that uh, turned out to be not true. There is no fire. It is a false alarm. Let the game begin. And they just made an announcement here at Camp Randall that the event will continue and that there is no alarm. And so fans now headed back toward their seats and some will continue out of Camp Randall 21 to 3 with 856 to go fourth and one Burks with it Burks straight ahead and Chris Orr the first on the scene for the Badgers and I don't know that he was able to get it Burks as Orr came in but I think with the mark, they're going to say that he did. So a first down. Now watch, tackles now for Orr. Watch Chris Orr attack the line of scrimmage. He's seen the power play before in camp and practice, and he knows how to attack it downhill. Good hit. Running back able to fall forward for the first down, but good play. That's first and ten. That's going to keep it alive going for it. On a fourth and one silvers quickly to the air connects with Jarvis Bentley and Shelton there we have seen two players ejected for Wisconsin because of targeting Leon Jacobs in the first quarter and then Derek Tyndall here in the second half silvers now out of the backfield and another big stick by Chris Orr well, Dave Aranda was telling us the truth when he said the sky's the limit for Chris Orr. An instinctual player. He's got a knack for the screen game. Watch him pick it up. He's got Burks man-to-man, -man and he's all over it. All over for the tackle for loss. It throws him down with authority. Sleeves and all. Orr, 13 tackles, a career high. First tackle for loss. Silvers under pressure. Wrapped up and brought down by Vince Beagle. He's got a motor, he just keeps coming. And Beagle with the sack, and that's going to be his second. Come off the right side of your screen. Just works actually through a double team, through the tight end and through the tackle. And usually it's hard to get to Silvers, but he holds onto the ball, and Beagle knows how to finish when he gets to the QB, wraps him up for the sack. Second sack of the season for Beagle. Third down now in a ton. Third and 22. Not many plays in the playbook for Neil Brown for third and 22. Three wide receivers. Top of your screen. Now a timeout taken by Neil Brown once again. The 35-year-old went to the University of Massachusetts where he played. Former offensive coordinator for the University of Kentucky in his first year at Troy. Down 21. Coming up next, State Farm Post Game Show with Dave, Jerry, and Howard from our studios in Chicago. 
lot to talk about here on this Saturday in the Big Ten, including Northwestern, headed down to North Carolina to take on Duke. Silver slings it over to Salim. Salim close to the 40 and pushed out of bounds. And a pickup of 17 now. Just sits down in a soft spot, then breaks outside, gets up the sideline before Shelton brings him down. Along with Caputo and in pursuit, Beagle. Fourth and seven going for it here once again. And Troy's looking for a first down. Look no further than number seven, Teddy Rubin in space. And I've got him matched up one on one. Salim in motion. Silvers rolling out to the near side. Looks downfield and the pass is incomplete. The intended for Emmanuel Thompson and a flag is down once again. Back Holding toward the line of offense, scrimmage. Number 32, penalties decline. Ball penalties turns over and down. And that's First down do and 10. For Troy in that series. And Neil Brown coaching Brandon Burks there. The Duluth Trading Company hardest working player, career high, 13 tackles for the true freshman Chris Orr from DeSoto, Texas. Guy's been all over the field today. Chris Iron Orr, as I'm going to call him. <laughs> the guy's made plays in the backfield. Highly instinctual, meaning he reads plays and he attacks the football. And he's got great pursuit on the quarterback. We've seen him make plays all over the field. A pass break up there. For being a young backer, getting the reps he's getting, sensational debut for the youngster. Stavi to throw. Goes down the field to Austin Trailer. And Trailer reels it in. And they're going to say he was down at the one-yard line, 38 yards wide open was Trailer. How about the big fellow running routes all day long, hasn't gotten a pass all day, and in the fourth quarter, Stave leads him. And you can see, here it is, just a straight drop back. Nobody picks up Trailer down the middle of the field, and he says, oh, that's way out there, but he stretches the big fellow showing some athleticism. Look at him lay out. Trailer against Alabama, three catches for 39 yards last week, his first career touchdown. Catch. The previous play is under further review. Ruling on the field is that it's a catch. It is under review. We we're talking about Chris Orr from DeSoto, Texas. And when talking to the coaches, you know, they said, look, we're going to bring him in in the third series anyway. But a lot more playing time, obviously, because of the ejection of Leon Jacobs. And Chris Orr has been great. All right, this is the play that is under review. You don't see enough to overturn anything there. And remember, you need indisputable video evidence. Yeah, play stands as called. So it's going to be first down and goal to go from the one-yard line as Trailer makes a great catch, extending out and then bringing it in. And they Stavi on the day. 12 of 16 for 201 yards. He's been solid as he has been the entire season through the air. Play action, Stavi under pressure. Fires it to Trailer and a touchdown for the Badgers. Just a little bit of a bootleg action. Finds Trailer, you know, he did all the work to get him down, but didn't get paid there. They said, we want to reward the big fella. Yeah, Trailer. The tight end. Lonnie Gosha was trying to track down Stavi Gosha, a four year transfer from Arkansas. You know, look, you, you think about the way that when Paul Christ was here, how he would use that tight end. 
And he, it was a featured part of their offensive attack. Travis Beckham, Lance Kendricks, Garrett Graham. What a tradition here at Wisconsin, especially at the tight end position. 28 to three as Trailer records his second touchdown of his career. For Stavi, the third straight 200 plus yard game for the second time in his career. He did it in his first three starts as a freshman back in 2012. And Stavi, 200 plus yards against Alabama, then last week, and of course here this afternoon as Ruben takes it at the five. Ruben now up to the 20 25 yard line before he is stacked up and brought down. By the Badgers, and of course, coming up, the State Farm Post Game Show with Dave Rapson, Jerry DiNardo, and Howard Griffith. As they take a look at the day in the Big Ten. Nebraska and Miami, they're in the fourth quarter. Ohio State and Northern Illinois, that one a lot tighter than... I think a lot of people expected. A little bit later on, of course, Rutgers and Penn State, Pitt and Iowa. Not a good day, unfortunately, for the Illini as they went down to Chapel Hill. Dallas Tidwell he is a new quarterback, and Tidwell on a handoff to Josh Anderson. And one of the things that Neil Brown said he said, look, I want to get out of this game healthy. That is extremely important to me. And especially, you got the bye week, then you have South Alabama coming up as they get back into conference action. You know, for the Badgers, next week they take on Hawaii. And then it's Iowa, Nebraska, Purdue, Illinois, Rutgers, Maryland. November 21st, mark that day. That's Northwestern, and then they'll finish at Minnesota. And it's second and eight. And a timeout taken by Troy. Let me take a look at this schedule. I mean, this, this is a favorable schedule. Would you agree? Totally. I mean, look at their games against the east side of the division. They get Rutgers in Maryland. No Michigan. No Michigan State. No Ohio State. So they've definitely got a favorable schedule when it looks to that. But I think these games are really critical. Iowa's look good. A yeah. lot to be told about them, though, tonight against Pitt on Two and BTN. 2-0. Oh. And, oh. and then Nebraska, they have not seemed to get their drift yet under Mike Riley. So that will be the telltale. And you mentioned this game, which I think might be the battle yeah. for the for the West. Northwestern. Yeah. Boy, they look good, the Wildcats. I know you'll see them next week. They're 3-0. and oh. They beat Stanford at home. Stanford team that had 10 starters returning go on the road to Duke and beat Duke soundly 19-10. 28-3 with 4-14 remaining here, second and eight. But there's still, you know, Paul Chris first year here, you know, trying to find out Exactly what he has after the first three games, as we talked about at the top of the broadcast, and a handoff now to Josh Anderson, and Anderson stacked up and pushed back. That you know, against Alabama, you kind of understand a little bit who you are. But then last week, 58 nothing, and you go back to last season, how that West was won, and uh, here it is with the Wisconsin Badgers taking on Minnesota, November 29th of 2014. Corey Clement right into the end zone. And to the air, wheel right. And Paul Bunyan, the axe, coming home to Madison. Well, since the days of Glenn Mason, Wisconsin has had Minnesota's number. Yeah. And they just haven't been able to get over that hump. 28 to 3. Take a look at those West standings as. And the clock stops at 328, 7 and 1. The Badgers, Minnesota, 5 and 3. Minnesota, how about this? They beat Kent State today 10 to 7. 
Shocking considering Illinois gets blown up by North Carolina and beat that same Kent State team two weeks ago, 52 to three. So very shocking. You know, you look at that, you see that there were three, there's a false start on Troy. Five yard penalty. Now, Minnesota was down. five and three in the West Division, but they were playing for a Big Ten Championship yeah. uh, division title that game the last week of the season. Again, not able to get past the Badgers. Glenn Mason will be in Iowa tonight. Hawkeyes taking on the Panthers. And of course, you know, a Iowa Hawkeye team that you know, the pitch, the pit coaching staff knows certainly well with uh, Pat Narduzzi there. <laughs> he's he's going to dial up some old tape. He goes, you know what, we. We know these guys here. You might see some uh, Michigan State pressed up corners a little bit, <laughs> taking some space away from C.J. Beathard, who's been playing well early in the season. But you know they're going to compete. A Pat yeah. Narduzzi defense always competes. They make you fight for everything. Looking forward to that game. And always love listening to Glenn Mason on the call. Absolutely. Bart Houston taking over as quarterback. Non-conference home win streaks. Coming into today, 33 straight against non-conference opponents dating back to 2003. The eighth longest in NCAA history, second longest active behind LSU. And it includes only 6.7 points per game allowed in the last seven non-conference games. And this is a Wisconsin, what are you going to make it, 34? 34, baby. 34. Wisconsin will improve to 70 and 7 at home since 2004 which is second in the BCS behind only Boise State who has nearly a 96% win percentage and a win today and certainly it's moving that way with 238 on the clock would it make Wisconsin the eighth power 5 program with 100 wins since 2005 a model of consistency of tough place to play in 2005 is that year that Alvarez really stepped out after 15 16 years as the coach became the athletic director and really a testament to the strength of the program to go through three head coaches and to have the success they've had Matt pretty unprecedented with the transitions they've had well it all starts with the athletic director Barry Alvarez he built this program he's taken it over a couple of times over the last few seasons obviously with Brett Bielema leaving as far as coming in and coaching the bowl games did it again when Gary Anderson decided to leave Big Ten football continues tonight in prime time you'll see either Rutgers and Penn State or Pitt in Iowa tonight on BTN and BTN to go go to btn.com slash game finder to find the game in your market and of course bringing back you know Paul Chris who's a native here in Madison, he understands that that stability is going to be back. And he's not going to have to worry about Paul Chris looking possibly to go someplace else. This is a dream job for Paul Chris as Ruben takes it from the 15 and then a big hit there on special teams. And T.J. Edwards, T.J. Edwards, you know, a lot of starters will play on special teams for Paul Chris and they come up with some Big time plays, and you saw that when they are right. Head coaches at their alma maters in the Big Ten: Paul Chris, Jim Harbaugh, of course, Pat Fitzgerald in his tenth year. There are twelve head coaches in the FBS that are in charge of their alma maters, and three in the Big Ten. Hard to believe that Pat Fitzgerald's been there ten years already. Took the job at thirty-one, and what a job he's done there! Oh, great job. Not a tough place to win consistently, yet he's done it. Handoff on the inside, and the handoff to Josh Anderson as the time continues to tick away. And Paul Crest will improve to 2-1 and one on the season. They have Hawaii coming in next week. And then it'll be on to Big Ten play. Troy, as we mentioned, a bye, and then it's South Alabama for the Troy Trojans and they will fall to one and two and then they're going to take on Mississippi State. They got to travel to Starkville to take on Mississippi State. Not an easy schedule for 
Troy. And Neil Brown. You can tell he's going to get things going with the Trojans. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, a coaches league, you know, there in the Sun Belt. And, they, and they've competed today. Yeah. And they've came in here, competed, uh, down 14-3 at half, but drove the ball, possessed the ball, made some key stops, and they're out of that Sun Belt Conference, like you said. Blake Anderson at Arkansas State. Scott Soderfield at App State. Mark Hudspeth, as I mentioned earlier, at Lafayette. And Willie Fritz at Georgia Southern. And Neil Brown at Troy. 28 to 3, and the clock is going to wind down. And 34 consecutive victories for the Wisconsin Badgers at home against non conference opponents. And they come away with a victory here. But a strong showing by Neil Brown and a great game for Chris Orr. Dave Aranda. Over the last eight quarters, his defense has allowed just three points. Well, you wonder why Paul Chris made it priority number one to keep Dave Aranda here when Gary Anderson left. Looks like a very, very smart man as the defense was dominating against a high-octane offense like Troy, led by that man, Chris Orr, with the sleeves and all having a career death. He was outstanding defensively in Stavi. Such a solid job here today at Camp Randall. And the victory today means 100, as I mentioned earlier, since 2005. What an elite group. Ohio State, Alabama, Oregon, LSU, Oklahoma, TCU, USC, and the Wisconsin Badgers. And let's send it down to Jay Wilson, who is with the head coach, Paul Chris. We apologize if there are any uh, technical difficulties there and hearing from Paul Chris there and Jay Wilson. Badgers come away with a victory, 28-3. to We'll have more from Madison, Wisconsin right after this. 23rd rank Wisconsin Badgers come away with a victory in their first ever meeting against the Troy Trojans. They are now 2-1 on the season. They'll face Hawaii next Saturday. 28 to 3. Badgers over the Trojans coming up next on BTN. It's a State Farm post game show with Dave, Jerry and Howard. So for Jay Lehman, Jay Wilson and our entire outstanding crew, I'm Matt Devlin saying along from Madison. This has been a presentation from the Big 10 Network.